Welcome back to another episode of the Young Buck Bets podcast. I'm your host, Dylan Kelly, and I'm going to be here a while because my pockets are heavier than ever after the gambling week I had. You can call me a multi-sport gambler, NHL, NFL. I hit them all. Find the value, all plus money too. Find the value. I hit them all. Plus money, baby. You call me a multi... Ah, don't call me a multi-sport athlete. Probably don't even call me an athlete by any means. I think if I end up playing in like a softball tournament, I've had two shoulder surgeries, but if I end up playing in like a softball tournament, it wouldn't even be the shoulder. I, as soon as I stepped out of the box, my hammy would just break off my freaking leg. Like I'm not an athlete by any means. <laughs> but I'm a multi-sport gambler. And you cannot dispute that. There's no disputing that. Look at the record, baby. Look at the record. I got a lot to talk about this week. I love doing one podcast a week instead of two or three because yeah, two or three has the consistency there. Like, yes, of course, but I still post all my picks um, even when I'm not doing the podcast. But the one podcast a week, I think, is where it's at because the topics, they just add up to talk about. I get more time to think about it, give you my actual opinion on it and my take on it rather than some people that sit on here and just kind of recycle big people's takes. I like, you know, taking my time and really digesting it. And what, do, what, is, what does the young buck think? That's, that's kind of where I'm at with the podcast. So one a week, I think, is what I'm going to rock with. I'm going to roll through what I'm going to talk about here today. I'm going to roll through the bets that I hit. I have to. I got to pat myself on the back because if I don't, then who's going to? There's a couple out there when you hit bets with me. You ride with me. You roll with me. You send a message or whatever, and I'm happy. I'm happy that I'm helping people make money or I'm at least entertaining people, maybe making someone laugh along the way. That's what I'm here for. But I'm going to roll through the bets I'm going to talk about uh, AB on the Full Send podcast. I'm going to talk about the NFL playoff picture because that's big time news. I'm going to talk about a couple coach firings. My take on Brandon Staley. Probably the sole reason why the Chargers aren't in the playoffs right now. We don't get to watch Justin Herbert go against Joe Burrow in the Super Wildcard weekend. Pretty salty about that. Said so we got to watch Derek Carr and the Raiders take on uh, Joe Burrow and the Bengals. I don't want that. I would much rather watch Herbert versus Burrow. But that's not all I'm going to do. I'm going to give out some picks for the wild card weekend in the second half. And this is also the first annual or the first inaugural, whatever you want to say, Young Buck Bets Award Show. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I'm entitled to give out awards. Why? Because I watch so much football. I gamble every single week. I give out picks, I give out content, my take on the game. I am entitled to give out awards. So I'm going to give out my NFL season awards in the second half. My own award, the Young Buck Bets Cash Cow Award. Who won me the most money? Maybe I'll clip it, send it to them on Twitter. Hopefully they want a t-shirt or even just acknowledge the fact that some kid with like 58 followers on Twitter just gave him an award. <laughs> but that's what we're going to do. But I'm going to start with recapping my picks. Because like I said, I got to pat myself on the back. If you're listening to this and you're like, Dylan, I listened to your last podcast on YouTube, wherever you're at. I didn't hear these picks that you're talking about. You got to follow me on Instagram, Twitter. I guess if you're on YouTube, you've just got to look at my shorts and even TikTok. I'm not on TikTok doing dances and stuff yet. Keyword yet. I'm not on TikTok doing dances and stuff. But I'm on there giving out gambling picks because I don't know, maybe the TikTok community gambles too. Who knows? They're all in under one minute. At Dylan Kelly Show, the Young Buck Bets podcast, whatever you want to search up, you're going to find it. Instagram, Twitter, hop on. The Instagram's kind of booming right now. Um, I, I'm really excited with it. I love what I'm doing. It seems like people are responding to what I'm doing. I love that. Something that I'm just doing naturally for fun and people seem to be enjoying it. Love that. But to talk about the bets, I hit on a lot. Right after the podcast, I'm pretty sure I, I gave out a video and it was all NHL picks. Gave out a, a nice little plus 210 money line parlay, Leafs and Penguins. I think it was, actually, sorry, it wasn't a money line parlay. It was just a plus 210 parlay. It was the Penguins money line and the Leafs puck line. And I'm pretty sure it was sitting at plus 210. We hit it. Penguins, huge third period comeback to get the win. Leafs iced the puck line with like 15 seconds ago, scored an empty netter that was just lucky but it still cashes. The same night, John Tavares, plus 150. You want to talk about luck? 
he was given the goal, then it was taken away from William and given to William Nylander for two periods. And then they start the third period and say, actually, we gave that goal to John Tavares. Either way, that's a 2-0 and start to the NHL season for the Young Buck. We turn around the next night, and anytime goal scorer, Matthew Kachuk at plus 187, we hit that too. Can't complain. Like I said, my pockets are heavy. But it didn't stop there. We turned around in the NFL. You know we do the quick hitter. You know I give out the prop picks for all the primetime games. And we kept hitting all Sunday long. I had the 49ers dog of the week. That was the definition of the dog of the week right there. They were down 17-0. They didn't really look good. They didn't look like they were going to get anything going. Jimmy G's thumb was really bothering them. And then all of a sudden they came back. And they get the win in overtime. And we cash a plus 160 money line. Dog of the week. Woo! San Francisco 49ers money line, baby. That cashes. Our next one, same uh, no, same day, Sunday night. This is in the Chargers and Raiders game. We hit on Hunter Renfro plus 140 anytime touchdown. That's a good little hit. I said people are going to be pissed. Be like, oh, you're picking a favorite. Are you really when it's plus 140? Like you're telling me if a guy's a lock to get a touchdown in your mind and the odds are plus 140, you think that's too chalky? You make a good living hitting plus 140 bets that you think that are a lock. Let me tell you that. You could get famous off hitting plus 140 bet locks. Um, my last one that I hit, and this was like, he had a huge second half. I kind of thought it was dead. It was Mike Williams over four and a half receptions sitting at plus 120. We hit them all. We hit them all. The one thing I will say, like I said, I got to pat myself on the back a little bit. These are all plus money picks. Not a lot of guys out there are doing it. Like I follow a lot. I've, I've have followed a lot of gambling guys on Twitter. A lot of people give out really chalky picks, man. Minus 125s all the time. Minus 130. This is a minus 200. I get it. You're just picking your winner and who you think is going to win. So you're just, you don't really care about what the line says. But I think if you're like a real true gambler, I think you kind of respect guys like myself, Giles Gallant, who's out there giving plus money picks all the time and hitting at a good clip. It takes a little bit more research to go in and find value than it does just giving out a chalky pick. So I'm proud that I, I, the picks that I'm hitting, I'm not giving out minus 200 picks. Like I said, I'm hitting plus 210 parlays, plus 187 goal scorers, plus 140s plus 120 overs. Like I, I love what I'm doing here and I'm going to keep it up because I love finding value and I don't like picking chalky picks anyways. So what a week, what a week it was. So moving on, we go from the pit to the palace. We're talking about Antonio Brown's song, I guess, and his appearance on the full set podcast with the Nelk boys. In all, this guy's out of his mind in all honesty. Um, I couldn't really believe some of the things he was saying. I couldn't believe he kept taking shots at Brady. Brady was the only reason this guy got back in the league last year. Only reason why, you know, he won a Super Bowl. Only reason why he was really even a part of the team. Bruce Arians never wanted Antonio Brown to come to the team. Tom Brady is the only guy, reason he was really there. And Antonio Brown just taking shot after shot at him, it felt like. That wasn't, that was just weird to me. Talking about, oh, AB's on a prove it deal. Another thing is he's talking about, he's like, who's better than me on that team? AB, if the whole Bucks team went to free agency right now, I think I don't even think AB would be in the top seven in terms of free agents that get paid on that team. There'd be four or five defensive guys that get paid before him. Brady would probably get paid before him. Chris Godwin would definitely get paid before him. Leonard Fournette, I mean, I guess running backs don't get paid, so that's a bad one. AB would make more than him. But you get what I'm trying to say here. Seven, eight guys on that team would make more than him. And he's like, who's better than me? Who's better than me? Man, there's like probably seven or eight guys in that team, AB. Like, you're one of the greatest of all time. I get it. You can still play. But it was brutal. The one thing I will say is you can tell that the full send boys, like, they just didn't know football. Or maybe they just didn't want to step on his toes. AB kept being, this is a kumbaya, baby. This is a kumbaya. So maybe they just didn't want to step on his toes or call him out on anything. But... It just, it seemed like AB wanted to go on a platform where he was going to be like completely uncontested, just be able to, you know, talk his shit, say whatever he wants. And that's exactly what he got. So, I mean, credit to the Nelk boys for getting him on. That's a big land. Credit to AB for coming out and just being so open, just putting the feet up, talking about it, talking about how he's happy. Seemed like he planned doing that. Like he was just okay with the decision, whatever. I don't know, man. Like I said, at the start, it was cringy. It was brutal, but it was also like great at the same time. It was good content. I think AB somewhat knows what he's doing with that kind of stuff. But then once he gets going, it's just like, he's almost like Kanye in that sense. Like, it's just, you don't really know 
what he's talking about. He just kind of rambles. And I don't think he knows either. He just wants to hear himself talk. Kind of like me. But one of those things is I've seen ever since he went on that podcast, everyone kind of reeling back their take. Oh, yeah, he's probably going to play again. Next year's a new season. He'll probably play again. The team will give him a shot. It's like, yeah, no shit, dummy. I said that literally two, like the second after it happened. I'm like, he'll be back next year. Like, it's the NFL. If you can play, if you can go out there and produce on Sunday, you can play. Like, you can play, baby. Get in the lineup and go out there and score me a touchdown. I don't care what you're doing off the field. Realistically, that's how the NFL seems to have always worked. That's how it works, especially lately. AB is going to be back in the league. I don't really get why people were so, like, gung-ho about him not coming back and never playing again. It was just weird to me. Like, if you can produce like AB does on Sundays, you almost have a hall pass in this league to do whatever you want, and you're going to get 100 different shots. So... I don't know. That's my take on the AB situation. I'm going to rapid fire off a couple of uh, my take on a few coach firings. The biggest one I thought, the one that made the least amount of sense was the Brian Flores firing in Miami. Um, I just, you know, like I even just said, like I was kind of a fan of Miami, but like, dude, I don't get how you could just fire your coach. He just went eight of nine. Like I get, even if there's some like discontent between him and staff and whatever else, like, yeah, maybe he's hard on staff. Maybe he's a little bit of a dick, but like I'm pretty sure so is Belichick. That's the reputation he has. But guess what? When you win ball games, like that, just, like you can kind of be a dick. So like what he was doing was working. The guy had a winning record over, I think, or a 500 record with a team like Miami. Apparently, his his uh, like relationship with Tua was really bad at the end. It deteriorated, is what everybody is saying. I I still don't think. That's enough to fire him. He did a great job. He was a great coach. He is a great coach. He's one of the only coaches, I think, that are going to get fired and get hired as a head coach, like, right away. All those other guys, they'll probably come on as coordinators or different things or even take a year off, do the Mike McCarthy thing. Or I think it's like Doug Peterson's going to do that this year, and they're all talking about him getting another head coaching job now. But Brian Flores probably will be a head coach in the NFL next season. I don't understand how that GM is still there. He's been there for 22 years. He's probably fired like nine coaches. And the owner's just like, no, you're still good, buddy. GM's all fine. <laughs> like, you're all set. You get a 25-year leash. But these coaches get a two-year leash where they go 500 for the first time, give your team a winning record two seasons in a row, and you gas him because he's a bit of a hard ass. Like that seems like a culture issue more than a Brian Flores issue. Um, on to the next coach. This is Brandon Staley. This guy was my boy at the start of the year. Like, my boy. I was talking about him. I wanted to have a beer with him. This guy lives life on the edge. Um, he, he coaches like he play, he's playing Madden, kind of like how I would want to coach a game. If I was, like, an owner of a team and it was my toy, it would be like, yeah, fourth down, let's go for it. We got Justin Herbert out there. Let's go. But it's hard to defend this guy after the play calls. Like, going for it on your own 18 in a close game, calling that timeout because you couldn't get your defense set. Like, that's on you. I know they would have had to make a stop anyways before the timeout, and they probably wouldn't have because that defense is horrible, but that timeout is what iced the game for them. That iced them going to the playoffs. It's hard to defend this guy. He's done things like this all season. At the start of the year when it was working, this guy was almost like a hero, being like, dude, like going for it on fourth down, coaching like it's mad, and this guy was a fan favorite. But when it starts, when you're on a big game like that and then it doesn't work, and you just point to the analytics and you say, well, the analytics said it was going to work. It's like, well, dude... Have a feel for the game. Think about it. I think he probably should get fired. I, I don't understand how he hasn't been yet. He might just be waiting a little bit. The reason why I think so is because Brian Flores is a free agent head coach right now. Brian Flores could help out that Miami team a ton. A defensive-minded, like, or sorry, not that Miami team, that Charger team a ton. That's my apologies. Brian Flores could help out that Charger team a ton. He's a defensive-minded coach. That defense in the Chargers is horrible. Brandon Staley can't fix it. He's not going to be able to fix it. I honestly think, like I said, Brian Flores would be a perfect fit. You give him Justin Herbert to throw the ball. He's got a couple weapons with Eckler. Mike Williams, if they re-sign him, Keenan Allen's still going to be there. You've got a couple guys on defense. He probably can get them going. Brian Flores might be the play for the Chargers. I just don't know if they're going to part ways for Brandon Staley because it's his first season. You love him. 
You just want to give him a little bit more leash. But like I said, Brad Flores is a free agent head coach right now. I would be, if I was the Chargers, I would be heavily interested in trying to bring him in to LA. And the last thing before I do the ad, I'm just going to talk about it quickly. Um, just because the NFL is over, it doesn't mean that this podcast is going to be over. I've had a couple people, couple people like come out and straight up ask me, they're like, so once football ends, are you just done? Like, you're just going to stop posting or stop posting podcasts or whatever else. And it's like, no, like this is the Young Buck Bets podcast, <clears throat> not the Young Buck footballs, not the Young Buck only gambles on the NFL. It's the Young Buck Bets. I got a, a million ideas, a million ideas. I'm doing YouTube now. I could do like day in the life. I could do lifestyle videos. I could do like... Like, I'm still going to do my picks with NHL, MLB when it starts up, NBA. I do a lot of futures picks, so I'm going to do a couple futures things. I got a couple ideas in terms of going live with props corners, answering you guys' questions on Saturdays during big times during the NFL or NHL season, answering all your questions, maybe giving out picks. I got a million ideas, and to be honest with you, I'm probably going to try them all. So come along for the ride. It's going to be awesome. Let's see what exactly is sponsored the pod here today. And then we'll get in to my picks and the first inaugural Young Buck Bets Award Show. Guys, the only company that's even worthy of getting a sponsorship of this podcast on YouTube is PRN Apparel. Go check it out on Instagram. She makes great t-shirts, not only just for me, but she makes great t-shirts for nurses to wear. Go check her out. Go order a bunch of shirts for the nurse in your life. PRN Apparel, go check them out. Welcome back to the second half of the Young Buck Bets podcast and the first inaugural, the inaugural Young Buck Bets award show. I'm really not going to waste much time. I'm going to get right into it. I got five awards to hand out. Some of them are real. Some of them are the actual awards that the NFL will give out. Some of them, three of them, are awards that I made up. Awards that I'm going to hand out that I think people are worthy of winning an award that I don't think they're actually going to win it, a big award like an MVP just because of the position they play. I'm going to make up an award for them and they're going to get one here too. But to start off, with my NFL MVP, Aaron Rodgers. It's got to be Aaron Rodgers. 4,115 yards, 37 touchdowns, four interceptions, a league-leading 111.9 QBR. This guy, 37 to 4 is absolutely insane. I do think this is my pick if you were to lock it in for who's going to win MVP. I know he's the favorite, but it is a great call for him to win back-to-back -back MVP. This award, the NFL MVP, always has to go to a quarterback, it seems like. I don't... I think Rodgers does deserve this one. Like I said, the 37-4 to 4 line is absolutely insane. The league-leading quarterback rating, and this isn't a guy who just throws little checkdowns. We see him throw big balls, Devontae Adams, MVS, Lazard. This guy throws downfield, and he's got the best quarterback rating in the league. I think it was just another season of pure dominance from Aaron Rodgers. And for that, I think... He gets himself, he secures himself back-to-back -back MVPs. Aaron Rodgers for NFL MVP. The second award, Rookie of the Year. I'm, I'm encompassing it all, offense, defense. I know they give out, I think, Offensive Rookie of the Year and Defensive Rookie of the Year for AFC and NFC. I'm giving out Rookie of the Year award. So, like I said, because it was offense and defense, I really did kind of... The one guy on defense that I will say I, I, I was debating between was Micah Parsons. He was very dominant for the Cowboys. He was good. He was great on defense. He looks like he's going to be a stud for a long time. But the one guy I think that was surpassed absolutely everybody was Jamar Chase. Without a doubt, Jamar Chase. Whether it was in your fantasy league and you traded him or drafted him or picked him up or something if he didn't go drafted, or... You just watch that you're a Bengals fan, you watch the games, or even you look at the stat line. He had 1,455 yards, which was the fourth best in the league, led all rookies. He had 13 touchdowns, which was the third best in the league, and he led all rookies. He had five games with 100 yards or more this season. He had two games with 200 plus yards. I think one of them he had 260 or 270, and he had three multi-touchdown games as a rookie. 
This guy was up there producing with the, I mean, maybe not Cooper Cup this year, but the Devontae Adams, Cooper Cup, Mike Evans in terms of touchdown uh, production. This guy was, he showed, like, he showed that he is a legit stud in this league for a long time. You heard Joe Burrow say it. He's like, you see the meme, just F it, throw it up there. Jamar Chase is down there somewhere. He's going to catch the ball. He's a rookie. It's crazy that he is in the league doing this. It reminds me of Justin Jefferson. And what did Jefferson, Justin Jefferson do this season? He went off again. I think Jamar Chase is on a very similar path to Justin Jefferson. So he's going to shred defenses for a long time. My rookie of the year was Jamar Chase. And this is when it gets into my own awards. This is the best player award. The best player. And this is basically me giving some sympathy to a guy who I think probably should win the MVP but won't because it always goes to a quarterback. And that is the best player award in the NFL this season, according to the Young Buck bets, was Cooper Cup. It all, he, like, he could have been the MVP, like I just said. I watched a couple Rams games this year, and the one thing I will say about Cooper Cup is I don't think there was another player in the league that had more of a direct impact on their team's success than Cooper Cup did. This guy, like every big play, Cooper Cup. Every third down, Cooper Cup. Guy, you need a guy to make something out of nothing, Cooper Cup. Red zone, Cooper. Like it was everything to Cooper Cup. And it wasn't just like Matty Stafford, every single ball was hitting him in the chest. This guy's making catches in double coverage. He's going downfield, diving for balls. He's getting hit while he's coming over the middle, making catches. Cooper Cup does it all. I think he by far was the best player in the NFL this season. He had 145 receptions, which led the league. He had 1,947 receiving yards, which led the league by more than 300 receiving yards. That's like two or three games for guys. He led the league by 300 like plus yards with 1,947, and he led the league with 16 receiving touchdowns. Like This guy was 20 receiving yards away from breaking the all-time single-season receiving yards record, that's insane. We haven't, I don't think we've talked about someone even coming close or doing that in a long time, at least in my recent memory. I could be wrong. Somebody that knows a lot more than me is going to go in the comments and say, yeah, it just happened two years ago. I, I don't remember in recent memory where people were talking about a receiver as much as they talked about Cooper Cup this year and breaking records. So I think the best player in the NFL this season was Cooper Cup. Honorable mention here, Jonathan Taylor. Guy was an absolute stud. He dominated the league as well. But the one thing I will say about Jonathan Taylor is like, if the team's down in a game, Jonathan Taylor can't really make as much of an impact. Whether the team was up in a game, trying to kill clock, or down in a the game, they went to Cooper Cup, and that's what gave him the edge here. Cooper Cup, best player in the NFL. This one is my favorite award. I think I'm going to do this every single year in the NFL, NHL, blah, blah, blah. This is my cash cow award. And I actually had to go through and go back from week one all the way through week 18, go through my bets to see who or what team or what it was that won me the most money gambling this year. And my cash cow award goes to the whole San Francisco 49ers team. This team as a whole was amazing for me this season. I hit on them as the dog of the week twice, so it was good plus money, money line. Hit on them twice, and I hit on them in a parlay with the Cowboys on like an alternative pred, uh, spread parlay later in the season. And on top of that, I hit Brandon Ayuk for touchdowns twice the season, and I hit Debo Samuel for a touchdown as well. So this, this team alone gave me like five to seven caches in one season. The San Francisco 49ers, salute to you guys. You guys are my cash cows. And I have three honorable mentions because if you win me money, you're part of the boys for life. So my honorable mentions, Jared Cook, Two hits on him. The thing about Jared Cook is both hits were over 220. I think one was plus 240 and one was plus 260. So those two big hits, I think I bet him three or four times this season. Just those two hits alone, we still make a profit on Jared Cook. Another one, the Bengals. I hit on Bengals bets four times this season. I cashed it, uh, cash bets, but whether it was Joe Burrow over passing touchdowns, Bengals in parlay, Bengals spread four times this season. We cashed on the Bengals. Bengals. And the last one, Hunter Renfro. I cashed three bets on him, two touchdown scores. This was later in the season once I picked him up from free agency on fantasy, maybe the best free agency pickup in the league. Didn't really matter. I didn't win the league, but still Hunter Renfro, honorable mention, two touchdowns and an over receptions hit on year. It was a great year of gambling on the NFL. And the great thing about it is it's not over. We still got super wild card weekend and we still got another thing. This last award, I almost didn't want to do this. You don't want to kick a guy while he's down. 
but I had these awards made since like week five or six of the NFL season. My final award is the Clown Show Award. And it's the team, the player, the coach. What was the biggest clown show of the season? And yeah, there was guys like AB where like, yeah, you were like, that was a clown show. Or different things, John Gruden, like you're a clown. There's different things like that. Henry Ruggs, you're a clown. But there was no bigger clown show than Matt Nagy and the Chicago Bears <laughs> this season. That team was an absolute mess. He solidified this award on Thanksgiving. There was like 6 million people watching that game. And there was like 5 million people questioning what the hell Matt Nagy was coaching, what he was doing, what all of his decision making in that game, they were questioning. This isn't an award <laughs> that you want to win. But guess what? It's a little bit of a consolation prize. You're getting kicked while you're down. But Matt Nagy, Chicago Bears, you guys are the Young Buck Bets Clown Show of the Year Award. Like I said, honorable mentions, Clown Show is Antonio Brown, Clown Show Henry Ruggs, Clown Show John Gruden. They're all honorable mentions, but Matt Nagy takes the cake. So there it is. There's the first ever award show. But we're not done here. Somebody's like, oh, probably turn off the podcast. No way. I still got picks. I still got to go through the NFL Super Wild Card Weekend. So strap in. I'm not going to waste any time. I'll have more picks out, my actual locks. These are just early leans, things to get you thinking about. Maybe you can go and look up the stats on, on your own as well once I give you the lean to see if I'm talking out of my ass or if it's something that you want to pick. But all of my picks will be released, whether it's on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Go follow it all. It'll be released on Saturday and Sunday. The first game we got on Saturday is the Raiders versus the Bengals. And like I said, I've been sour about this because I wish it was a Herbert versus Burrow matchup, but it's just not. But the Bengals are minus five and a half point favorites, minus 245 on the money line. Raiders plus 195 on the money line and the over-under is set at 49. I like the Bengals here. I think the Bengals are going to absolutely trash them. I think the Raiders got in. It was lucky. You're playing a Chargers team with Brandon Staley making calls like that. That kind of got you here. I don't know. I think the Bengals are a real kind of team. They might win one. They might win two. After that, I don't like them anymore. But I like the Bengals minus five and a half here. The one thing I also like in this game is the over-under sitting at 49. The Bengals have put up 40 points a lot this year, 35 points a lot this year. We just saw the Raiders do it. And early in the season, the Raiders offense was on fire. They were doing it all the time. They were putting up 30 plus points. I like the over 49 and the Bengals at five, five and a half here, sitting here on Wednesday. Those are my two leans for that game. Moving on to the next one, and it's the Patriots versus the Bills. The Bills are four point favorites, minus 200 on the money line. Pats are plus 170 on the money line, and the over under is sitting at 44. I think this is a classic coin flip game here. If you, unless you're a diehard Patriots fan or you're a diehard Bills fan, I don't know if you have like a real read on this game. I died on the sword saying I'm going to go with Nick Saban in the national championship game because it was like sometimes those game, big games come down to coaching. And I'm going to do it again here. My early lean, as you would know, I love the dogs, would be the Patriots at plus 170 on the money line. And if you don't like it to win outright, minus four is great because this game could come down to a final field goal. The over-under set at 44. I don't think the weather in Buffalo is supposed to be great. I would say... My early thing here is the Pats at plus 170 on the money line. I think that they're going to go out there and win. I think it's going to come down to coaching, like I said. And how could you not take Bill Belichick? Give me the Pats at plus 170. And this going on, moving on to Sunday, we got the Bucks versus the Eagles. Bucks are nine and a half point favorites and minus 400 on the money line. The over unders at 47. Eagles plus 310 on the money line, but I, I, I wouldn't suggest you take that. I know the Bucks kind of have some things swirling around on their just kind of surviving through games. That's why I don't like the nine and a half spread here, but I also don't like it for the Eagles. But the one thing I will say, this kind of contradicts what I just said. The reason why I don't like this for the Bucs is this just screams a sketchy, sketchy backdoor cover late in the fourth quarter where the Bucs are kind of playing prevent and not wanting to get hurt for next year, or sorry, next game, because they're already banged up. But, and that's why I wouldn't take the Eagles. Like, are you going to take the Eagles hoping they get a sketchy backdoor cover? No, I will probably be on props for this game. I don't have an early lean. I might like the over 47 in case the Bucks just absolutely go off. Like you've seen games where the Bucks can put up 40 and they give up 20. This game could get up to 60, 55, and the over under sitting there at 47. Maybe the lean is the over 47, but I don't like I don't like nine and a half. I don't like minus 400. I don't like the Eagles as a dog. So we'll move along. 
This game I'm actually really excited about. This is the 49ers versus the Cowboys. The Cowboys are three-point favorites, minus 160 on the money line. 49ers plus 140, and the over-under is set at 51. This one's tough. Like, I, I love this game. I can't wait to watch it. It's going to be real tough for me. I don't like the Cowboys in big games. I picked the 49ers last week because I said that I think the Rams are kind of a soft team, and the 49ers are a really tough team, and we kind of saw that last week. Did they empty the gas tank? I don't... I really don't think so. I think they get a second life. I think that really gives them a second life. I've been telling whoever would listen that I think the 49ers are going to go on a run here. I think the Cowboys are a very similar team to the Rams, where they're kind of soft, and if they get punched, they kind of, you know, they lay down a little bit. So my early pick here would be the 49ers on the money line at plus 140. That's two, that's two dogs I like right off the hop. Who is it, Pats and the 49ers, plus 140, plus 160 or 70 for the Pats. I like them both. This next one, I don't, I really like, this may be a game, like, I'll watch it because I'll be on props and stuff. But, like, dude, I'm, I'm so mad that the Steelers got in. You have to watch. Big Ben should have just rode off in the sunset. This one's going to be tough, especially with this many people watching. The Chiefs are 13 point favorites. I'm, I'm on Betway. So, those were at plus 100, those odds earlier today. I don't know if those are going to stick, but I would hammer that. If it's at plus 100 at minus 13, I would hammer it. Chiefs are minus 690 on the money line. Steelers are plus one or plus 490 on the money line. The over-under set at 46 and a half. And give me the Chiefs at minus 13. Like I said, I'll be on props. Just wait for the tweets and stuff and the videos. I'll be on props. But I don't think Big Ben, like, I don't think they Steelers score more than 10. I think this is a 35-10 game. 30-10. I think you got 20 points here to play with. I like it at minus 13. I don't think there's any chance of a backdoor cover. The Steelers just don't move the ball well enough. They just don't. Big Ben just can't do it, man. He just can't do it. This is another big one here. This is the Rams versus the Cardinals. The Rams are at home, so they're four-point favorites, minus 195 on the money line. Cardinals plus 165 dogs on the money line, and the over-under is set at 49 and a half. These two teams almost had, like, identical seasons. It just went absolutely identical. The first seven games, everyone's like, these two teams are the best two teams in the NFL. No one's going to beat the Cardinals. No one's going to beat the Rams. These guys are absolutely insane. The next seven games, they kind of just fell into the middle of the pack. They ran into some injury problems. Stafford, Kyler Murray, DeHop. They ran into some, both teams, they just ran into injury problems. And they kind of limped around a little bit. And then the last three games, they really limped home and, and now everybody's kind of down on them and they got to play each other to see who gets in i think that's great i think that's two teams that have had an identical season that's a great storyline and it's the monday night primetime game which means i'll be on props i keep saying that i'm a broken record but i like the rams at home here minus three but if you can take that minus 195 on the money line and parlay it with something and get plus money that's probably what i'll be doing so i i would tell you you're smart if you do that, you are smart because that's exactly what I'll be doing. I'll be taking the minus 195 on the money line for the Rams, not, not trusting the spread whatsoever, and I will be parlaying it with something else that's minus 150, minus 160, and I will take it to town because that'll be like a 170, plus 170 or plus 180 parlay that we hit there. So there it is. There's the picks. Super wild card weekend. I'm excited. There's going to be more NHL picks I give out this week before Super wild card weekend hits. I'll be giving out picks all weekend for Super Wild Card Weekend. Those are probably pretty close to the actual picks that I'm going to take, if I'm being honest with you. I gave you all my takes. I gave you the award show. I broke down AB, broke down the Wild Card Weekend, set up for a great week of NFL, NHL gambling. Maybe if I sprinkle some NBA in there, I don't know. I'll be doing it all. I'll be here to recap it all next week break it down, give you more picks. Maybe I'll even have another couple of awards to hand out after the playoffs. Young Buck bets playoff MVP each week. I'll be here. But until then, I'm out. Peace!